All right, five myths if you're about to get into tech, let's get right into it. Number one, DSA is a good metric for interviews. Today, unfortunately, we are on the opposite side of the bull run. So basically means things will recover from here. Even though it is a metric, it isn't the primary metric anymore. During the bull run, companies want to overhire and there isn't enough talent out there. Everyone's over competing and hence they're okay with someone who only knows DSA. Today, if you want to join a company, they're going to see whether or not you're going to provide them value on day zero. I met a friend today who graduated last year and he told me amongst the 30 people from his batch who went to Amazon, 15 got laid off. The people who got full time offer at Amazon were told to wait for six months before they can join. They were still given 3 lakh rupees for the six months. So tech is a lucrative field. It's not like a conventional job. They were all given 3 lakh rupees for the six months that they're going to sit idle. At the same time, if a company is laying off this aggressively, most probably they're hiring very cautiously. They're looking at what value can you provide on day zero. So make sure you're looking at open source projects. Make sure you're looking at what companies are using today and you're comfortable with that tech stack. I'm not saying DSA is useless. DSA is still a metric, but it's just one of the metrics. Every interview that I'm seeing today, the first round is a DSA round just to filter out candidates. And quite frankly, it's not too difficult for some reason. They want to, of course, filter out people who cannot code. But after that, the two important interviews are a system design interview and a live coding interview. Usually they're pretty connected. The thing that you design the system for is what you code in the next interview. These three are the primary set of interviews people are having today. So make sure you're developing some real world skills and not running behind only DSA for a job because most probably only DSA is not going to get your job for some while now. Hopefully the bull returns and you'll be fine. Point two, degrees matter. At this time, unfortunately, degrees don't matter. What you get from a college is a college placement usually that a company is coming on campus to hire you. No one's coming on campus right now. Even in IITs, the amount of companies that are coming is much lesser. I have heard from someone in IIT Delhi that only two companies registered for placements this year or internship, one of these two, Stripe and one more company. So it's a pretty tight market everywhere. This gives you the opportunity to throw away the trauma of a tier two, tier three college. No one's coming on campus. No one's caring about degrees. The only thing they are caring about is what internships have you done? What prior products have you built? Can you build something similar for us? Are you comfortable in a specific stack that has been used in our company? Can you join the team and increase the overall level of the company? No one is looking at a degree. If I'm being honest, degree anyways does not matter. Even during bulls, I have friends who make three LPA even today. I have friends who make a lot of money and I went to an IIT. So there are people on both the spectrums out there. You just need to be on the other side. And for the next six months, forget about colleges. No one's caring about colleges. Number three, internshala or LinkedIn is where you'll find your job. Not today. You might find some low hanging fruit on internshala. I don't know. LinkedIn definitely is not the right place to connect to people today. Twitter or cold emailing HRs is the best way to get a job today. Again, this changes as the markets fluctuate. During bull runs, a lot of recruiters have a lot of incentive to hire people, which is why you'll see a lot of them on LinkedIn. Right now, people are cutting down on recruiters, you have to actively reach out to either a senior engineer in the team, a manager or the CEO, CTO itself. That's the best way to get connected. And the best platforms to get in touch with them is either Twitter or email them directly on their official email. Number four, AI will take away jobs. AI may take away jobs. It may not. I have no idea. At the same time, I've learned to not be faced by market cycles and innovations like these that come. At the very least, AI will make sure that there is a basic benchmark of an engineer. No one's sitting on the bench. No one's doing repetitive tasks that an AI can do. I strongly feel there will be a need of good solid engineers always. I also feel that this is the reason okay, this is the market for a very good senior engineer. By senior, I mean someone who's good at what they do in a specific niche, be it backend, frontend, DevOps, whatever, and they can hit the ground running on day zero. I think this market will always be there. You always need an operator to own a specific section of the code base. Number of jobs may or may not go down. I don't know. Lucrative jobs will always be out there. If AI as a field does displace a lot of engineering jobs, it will create a lot of jobs for people who do much better tasks, basically orchestrate the AI. That is what I'm super excited about as well. So be more excited about this innovation that's happening. Aim to be in the top 10% and your job will be totally sorted. Point number five, your device or your laptop matters. Let me show you the laptop that I had during my college. This was my first year laptop. For the first one and a half semesters, this is what I used to code with, still works pretty well. You're not coding the fanciest algorithms out there. You're not gaming all day. You're just writing code that needs to compile, will compile on a machine like this. After a year is when I got a simple 50,000 rupees Lenovo laptop. It got me through college. Trust me, I never felt and today even don't feel a college can ever hold you back or, you know, the 
background that you come from the humbler the background the more the motivation to so focus on that you will need a laptop phone coding isn't the best idea for your eyes but a basic laptop works with that let's move to the last point if you've had a career break if you've not done a cs degree even if you've never coded at all does not mean you cannot be great in this field i've said this many times acceleration in coding matters much much more than speed people keep telling me for the longest time this is a crowded field back in 2014 it wasn't it isn't today for people who are willing to put everything in it and get into the top 5%. The only thing that matters here is whether you have a good structured path of learning, whether you're learning the right set of things. And if you have someone to guide you through this journey, that's even better. Other than this, all of these are just points you might have in your head. They don't matter if you really want to do it. And if you have the right person guiding you or the right structured path, you can do it. Just put in the hours. Those were the six points I wanted to talk about. If you want to learn coding, very beginner friendly in a structured fashion. I will be launching something very soon. There is a discount link and there is a telegram link in description. Feel free to join it. With that, let's end it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.